Hello, family, and welcome to the Oikos Family Podcast, episode 22. Today's podcast is going to be all about family meetings. Now, I don't know if you have family meetings, but family meetings is something that was an example set before me in my childhood. When, when I was growing up, our family had a meeting once a week, and there were certain um, sort of criteria or there was a certain structure to these meetings, which I would like to share with you today. In actual fact, in episode 21, the previous episode, podcast episode, I spoke about being an example and that that is what I wanted to share, share on in the next few episodes. So it seems like unusual that family meetings is actually to do with being an example. But if you just stay with me, I'd like to read to you from the little letters from Granny Oikos, which I have recently narrated. And if you want to listen to the whole book, I do have it available as an audiobook. You can just go to Google and put in letters from Granny Oikos and audiobook. And I hope that it will lead you to one of the many places where this little audiobook is available for you. But for now, I just want to read to you a little piece out of the book about family meetings. The importance of family meetings. I especially remember as a young adult the family meetings we used to have. They were of such significance to me that I asked my mother to give me the guidelines she used for these family meetings so we could apply them in our own family for our growing young adults. So here is my mother's response. Hello, Sonia, Greg, Missy and Jamie. Okay, here are a few points, but remember that what works for one family doesn't necessarily work for another. However, this must have worked for us because look at the wonderful results we have from our precious children. I'm always totally awestruck by the fact that although lots of our principles came from our own upbringing and lots came from an instinct, not carefully planned strategy, this we believe came from a very strong sense of responsibility and love for our priceless gifts that the Lord had given us and a total faith that he would always be there to remind us and guide us in ways to nurture and train and love as he wanted us to care for them and the, the gifts that he had given us. So number one, have a family meeting or a one-on-one with your young adult or children. Have these meetings once a week or when necessary if a need arises or whatever suits your family and tell everyone that they must do their best to arrive at such meetings calm and in a good attitude. <laughs> number two, Ask the young adults and the children what is on their hearts and what their needs are from their home and family, and make notes. Do not comment or interrupt them while they are holding forth. Just only make notes. If they are rude or disrespectful while they are making their point, Dad should start his turn to speak by asking for any apology for the rudeness and point out that nothing can be achieved with a bad attitude. Close the meeting with no other comment from mom and dad other than we will consider all that has been shared. Point three. Mom and dad should discuss the requests, not the demands, of each child privately and go back to them at the next appointed meeting. Number four. If the most frequently asked issue is made, I want to be treated like an adult, then their performance as an adult needs to be assessed. I'm just going to pause there and tell you that that was a very, very strong point. That performance as an adult needs to be assessed was, there was quite a lot just in that one as far as our parents training us towards adulthood and that we had to take on certain responsibilities. And when they saw that we were fit or, you know, being responsible with that responsibility, then they would say, okay, now, now you can be respected and treated like an adult in this area. So that is another whole topic. Maybe I must do another podcast on that one. Okay, point five. The parents should then discuss the reasonable requests and the unreasonable ones and point out how they can be achieved. The young adult must be reminded that if they are still financially dependent, they're not ready to be their own boss. They also need to be asked how they think they can contribute to the smooth running of the home, taking point by point the issues of love one another the attitude, considerations for others in the home, observance of the family principles, chores, respect, and so on. So that's just a little to go on with, and we hold all parents and young adults up in prayer. 
The most important thing for the parent to remember, in our opinion, is that you don't buy your children's love by giving in to all their demands for money, privileges and freedom. Don't stand on a wobbly foundation. Stand together and demonstrate to them that you're always there for them with lots of love and concern. Love from mom. So I'm sure you've gathered from that 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 is very much about being an example. And for us, when we were growing up, we experienced the example of our parents' commitment to us as and they took it very seriously that they were raising these children into young adults and young adults into adults. And they really committed to it and they were very intentional about the equipping us as in giving us time. And so these meetings became to us something of huge respect both ways. We respected our parents and we felt respect from them, which really I believe was a very, very good foundation as my mother wrote in that letter, don't start off on a wobbly foundation because that foundation she set in place was something I was able to carry into when it came time for me to raise our children as in when they were going from childhood into young adulthood. So when I had children in young adulthood, this is exactly what we would do. We would follow the criteria that was laid out um, at our family meetings that I had become accustomed to, hence me writing to my mother to ask her to please send us a letter with a refresher (laughs) to give me the outlines so that I didn't miss something. And so now here I am, in this incredibly privileged situation whereby I can share that with you on this podcast and anybody who's listening, wherever they happen to be in the world, I'm just so grateful. Thank you for listening all the way to this point. And I do hope that this little bit of sharing about holding family meetings is going to help you. I'm sure you have gathered by now that I could speak a lot more on this topic. We've had so many experiences from these family meetings, hearing from the young adults what's on their heart, what their concerns are, and then being able to build from that and really be supportive in helping them. In fact, if one of the young adults had a question that was out of my scope or out of Greg's scope, but perhaps we knew somebody or we could ask around and find somebody that could help with that particular concern that that young adult had. I'm thinking of an instance. An instance would be Um, Our son, James, went through a time of asking a lot of questions about aviation. And he was talking to us about it quite a bit, you know, as in what was involved if he wanted to become a pilot. And yet one of my brothers was a pilot. So I could hear for his heart, hear our son's heart, and then I could make a specific intentional time to go and visit my brother with our son and encourage our son to ask him, my brother, all the questions about being a pilot and what was involved. So that would have been just one of the little examples of something that came out of our family meeting time. So I'm sure you've gathered by now that I could just keep going and tell you many, many, many more stories about what we received and what came out of these family meetings and how valuable they became to us for training and support and help and just actually the uniting of the family and for the young adults to know that we were there for them and we were committed to being a support to them. So I do do hope that after listening to this podcast, if you're not already having family meetings, I do hope it becomes part of your lifestyle as in having weekly family meetings. In fact, you know, as you, as I said, I could go on a lot about this. Now I'm standing here and I'm thinking about Um, Something else that used to happen at our family meetings, we always made an event of them. So it wasn't just sit down and have a family meeting. It was actually planned. So there was generally something, um, you know, surrounding that, such as a lovely Sunday meal or some kind of special tea thing. Maybe we had waffles and then we sat down and had a family meeting. So it wasn't just a family meeting. We're calling a family meeting, rush, rush. Everybody come, we have to have a family meeting now. And even those ones that needed to be immediate because there was something that needed to be attended to, we wouldn't just try and attend to things on the fly. If we knew that we needed to call a meeting, as it were, a family meeting, then we would we would make the time and say in half an hour, we need to have a family meeting. And everybody had a chance to then just prepare themselves a little bit, even if it was 10 minutes, you know, to the next family meeting. And it was those spontaneous ones 
we still planned them. We still thought about um, preparing for them, not just trying to resolve matters as they arose. We would sit down and we would talk about it. So I'm sure you've also gathered from this that we would be able to pray. We had time now to pray because this was serious. We're having a family meeting. Family meetings were considered serious, <laughs> as in we would read from the Word and we would hear from one another. And the good thing about coming back to the follow-on meeting was I found that I had time to find Scripture about certain things. So if a certain young adult had shared something that was troubling them, them about another person in the family, I would be able to have time to go and pray about that and find scriptures that related to that or speak to somebody. As I said, I would maybe speak to my own parents about a, a situation that we were having a little struggle with. And then I'd bring that back to the next, everything that I had discovered along the way um, between the family meetings so that I would then have something to offer at the next family meeting that would be supportive and helpful. But wait, before I completely close off on this topic, I do want to finally say that whatever we took from the family meeting was something that everybody understood until the next family meeting. Okay, so let me give another example. Let's say at one of the family meetings there had been one of the young adults had wanted to share or had shared that there was something that was troubling them about somebody else in the family and they had chance to share that. Then the next family meeting, we would have chance to discuss it and give support into that situation. But here's the thing, is as the week went on, all of us were aware of this particular situation. So let's say, let me use an example of um, insensitivity. Let's say one of the young adults had felt that there was an insensitivity from a member in the family then we would be very aware of that during the course of that week until the next family meeting. And I would be aware that if I saw that insensitivity, I'd be able to address it. And all the time working towards finding a resolve and a solution so that this negative thing wasn't going to carry from week to week to week. We just knew that we were being aware of it for that week. We were going to be attending to it more specifically at the next meeting but all the time, there was this awareness that there was a little struggle that somebody was having. I've heard people use the phrase intentional parenting. So I suppose you can call it that. But what we called it was just being committed, loving, caring, and honoring God. <laughs> no, that's a lot more than just intentional parenting. But I do hope that this short podcast has encouraged you and given you some support, I hope, in helping you in your intentional parenting and in your loving and caring for the children, young adults that God has entrusted to your care. So be blessed. Remember, be glad and not gloomy. And I hope you will have family meetings. Look forward to sharing with you at the next podcast. Thank you for being with me. Bye for now.